Okay, I would like to say uh, good evening, Sir Erorita. And if ever my classmates would have access to the video, I would like to say good evening to all of you. It's been an experience again, uh, learning about the subject with all of you guys. So uh, I'm doing this video as part of the requirement and uh, I hope I can produce good quality video in spite of the slow connection. So uh, the, the assignment was to choose a leader uh, for my video presentation. So I was thinking about uh, which leader because I have a lot of leaders. Uh, I mean, I have a lot of, uh, uh, what I would say, idol leaders in mind, but I just decided to, number one, pick a Filipino leader in the context of our subject and as a Filipino living in the Philippines, I would say choosing a Filipino leader would be better than choosing a leader from outside. So that's one criteria. Second criteria is, uh, well, I was looking at different Filipino leaders and for, unfortunately, I really could not decide uh, which Filipino leader to, to choose. So I just decided why not uh, cite uh, our founder of the school, which is Benjamin Romero Salvosa. And uh, it was an experience also doing the research on him because as a nephew, and he happens to be my uncle, he is, is very close to my heart. And I used to see him at home when I was growing up. He used to visit our home and uh, be with my parents. So moving on, I did the research on Tito Ben or Benjamin Romero Salvosa because uh, he had the qualities of a good leader. And while I was doing the research, I found out some new things about him and I myself was very impressed. So uh, let me just move on. I think I only have 10 minutes. Mm. Let me just read to you one of his famous quotes. Okay. According to him, a diploma is an inventory of the title that we know. We frame it to remind us that the road to knowledge is endless. Let us spread out and make use of the charm and knowledge for the common good. Knowledge is lost to those who use it only for the good of themselves. This was written by Benjamin Salvosa way back 1948. Another quote that I found out during the research, he says, my religion is to be good and do good. Personally, I never saw him inside a church. But when I read this quotation from him, I, I believe he meant what he said. He always wanted to do good for the common good. Okay. okay. So um, next. All right. His name. He was named Benjamin Romero Salvosa. His birthplace was in Unisan, Quezon Province, Philippines. He was born April 19, 1913. He died October 14, 1994. I remember uh, I was already based uh, outside of Pagyo and I happened to visit Pagyo to attend his uh, wake and burial. His parents was Caritano Salvosa, who seems to be my grandfather, and Margarita Romero, my grandmother. His wife, Evangeline Domingo Salvosa. We call him, I'm sorry, we call her uh, Tita Evangeline. Uh, their children, Linda, Ati Aida, Nene, Jesus, Ray, and Gary, who has already been uh, deceased for some time. Reasons for choosing the leader. So let me just read out to you. From his humble beginnings in Unisan, Quezon, where he was born, he had helped his mother, Margarita, in taking care of his younger sisters, Josefina, Delia, Wevina, and Flor, uh, the youngest. I think I missed one uh, of his siblings. I just could not remember uh, the name, so I'm sorry. Young Benjamin was able to support himself as a young law student and top debater in the College of Law at the University of the Philippines and finished his law studies with honors. At the peak of his career as a lawyer and as a government employee, Benjamin had occupied a position with the Coconut Authority in Quezon City, Philippines. Now, 
based on my recollection, based on the stories uh, that I heard, and based on my research, I found out that he was also active in the government service. He, he occupied a high position uh, in the Coconut Authority. I think that was in Quezon City, Philippines, way, way, way back. Uh, I think that was before, right after the war. Approaching at middle age, Benjamin was diagnosed with tuberculosis and decided to bring his wife and children to the city of Baguio sometime in the mid 40s, allowing him to have a cleaner air than Manila, which was already polluted at the time by his doctors. This story never appeared on, on the research uh, that I found. It never even appeared in one of the YouTube uh, documentary that I watched. But I know for a fact that uh, he was diagnosed uh, having tuberculosis and Baguio City was very ideal to him. It was during his stay in the city of Baguio that he envisioned the city as the future education capital of the North. Hence, he established Baguio College's foundation and leased a few classrooms in an old building named Lopez Building along Session Road and served as his family's residence for some years and also occupied some rooms in a building called Antipolo Building, of which these two buildings are still existing up to this day. Okay. I've shared some pictures here of the old Lopez building and the Antipolo building where Baguio Colleges started. Okay. I believe uh, my uh, father also was teaching in the engineering uh, college. That's what I know. Moving on, ben Benjamin's accomplishment as a student of law at the University of the Philippines, as a government employee, as an educator, and as a fam family man, left a legacy that will never be forgotten. Okay, I've shared here a 10-minute video link that will highlight all his accomplishments. In fact, I just went to YouTube and took my chance and key in his name, and I found a good YouTube that was done by, I think, one of his daughters, Nanny Bowman, okay? So that will be a good reference. And it's a very good uh, video. Uh, it's a good, uh, the quality is very good as far as editing is concerned. Now, um, the leader's executive strategies, significant executive strategies. The importance of sharing the leader's executive development strategies is to encourage awareness of the leadership qualities that he possessed, the character that he had to build, his vision and mission that education is a birthright, and his persistence to establish an educational institution in the city of Baguio. Okay. Now, I also found one, one uh, reference in the internet and let me just read to you, quote unquote, okay? This was authored by a certain Tolosa with no date. Despite a pessimistic outlook and the bleak prospects pervading the climate of any undertaking that time, attorney, attorney, attorney Benjamin Romero Salvosa envisioned Baguio City as a university town. So as early as 1940s, or before 1946, when he arrived, the city already saw uh, the future of Baguio City as an educational uh, capital. With such vision, he undoubtedly pursued a noble mission by founding a college, unquote, Olosa. Significant development strategies. Benjamin was committed to self-development throughout his lifetime. His commitment to self-development and preparation for a productive life manifested in the following milestones. I also found this um, in the internet, and this is the citation, BRS Centenary 1913 to 2013, which was published, I think, 2015, according to the research uh, reference. Law student at the University of the Philippines from 1932 to 1936, school editor, president of the forensic leaders alongside with Jose B. Laurel Jr., Fred Ruiz Castro, to name a few, gold medalist, silver medalist of the UP debating team from 1933 to 1935, 
University of the Philippines President Political Science Club, 1931. University of the Philippines President Debate and Orat Oratorical Club, 1934 to 1936. Premier Junior House of Representatives, 1932. Private law practice from 1937 to 1944 before the war, was it? Baguio Colleges Foundation was established in 1946. He was also a Fulbright scholar or a Fulbright lecturer for I think six universities while he was in the US from 1951 to 1952. He established the BCF Campo Filipino uh, campus in 1952. He was also commissioned as a major by the Philippine Army and became a lecturer in the Philippine Military Academy. He was awarded the Father of Higher Education in the city of Baguio way back 1976. He was appointed by President Magsaysay as chairman of the board and general manager of the Philippine Coconut Administration in 1954. He was chairman of the first international coconut, coconut conference in 1955. He was awarded by the Quezon Posthumous Award Medallion ng Karangalan in 2002-2002. He was editor-in-chief of the Commonwealth. He was also the publisher of the famous Gold Ore from 1948 to 1995. So the list goes on. So I only had to take in the key uh, milestone that he had, but uh, based on the reference, you can still find a lot of accomplishments and the list is, was just too long. What is the significant stakeholder strategies? The leadership commitment to developing people was his lifelong uh, commitment. Okay, As the elected father of higher education in the city of Baguio in 1976, Benjamin was always guided by his principle that education is always a birthright. The education should not be reserved only for the rich, but rather for anyone regardless of economic status religion, cultural background, ethnicity, and even sexuality. In, his, in this regard, the University of Cordilleras applies the same principle wherein the student population accommodates, wherein the student population accommodates students from all, from all walks of life and recently students from other nations pursuing their undergraduate and postgraduate studies. Significant uh, organizational strategies, the leadership commitment to developing people in the organization continues even up to this day since his passing about 27 years ago. University of the Cordilleras continues its commitment to developing future leaders of the nation and in the city of Baguio. Several personalities are alumni of the University of the Cordilleras and among them is former mayor city, former Baguio city mayor Mauricio Domagan who earned his Bachelor of Laws in 1973. Okay, I've given the citation and that is his picture. So part two of the uh, video or the draft is all about leadership unique strategies. The leadership unique strategies that are not common to other leaders in his, is his passion for higher education and in the service of the common good for the people of the Cordillera and nearby provinces. His firm belief in fair justice and the rule of law had driven the leader to establish the law, College of Law and the College of Criminology as the two leading colleges in the university. One of the most significant strategies was his will to donate his personal wealth to the University of Cordillera. So in fact, uh, he donated everything. Uh, I think that was his part of his uh, last will and testament that all his personal wealth will, were to be donated to the University of Cordilleras, that is the citation, Memories of Old Baguio, 2017. Leadership common strategies, the common leadership strategy that the leader did embrace was to run for public office in the city of Baguio. But despite his personal and institution's contribution to the development and the progress of the city, Benjamin just decided to focus on his work and his contribution as a private citizen and educator, educator in the city. He never really wanted to be in the limelight, okay? Part three, decide and defend. 
leadership strategies, what are the best practices. Benjamin had invested a lifetime of continuous learning and self-development. The leader was not too visible in the social gatherings in the city of Baguio, but always believed in working behind the scenes by developing an educational institution in 1946. Back then, most of the educational institutions were located in the capital city of Manila, of the Philippines, which was old Manila. His passion for education had a significant effect on those people around him by following his footsteps in the pursuit of higher education. What are the recommendations as far as leadership strategies? Leaders who occupy positions of authority and with significant influence over their followers must learn to lead by example. The process of learning does not stop after earning their bachelors, rather leaders can encourage and support by, provi pro by providing educational programs to their people. There are postgraduate programs that are available and applicable for both the private and public sectors. These programs help future leaders in the organization to drive organizational profitability and efficient public service. On a personal level, uh, what are the leadership strategies? The leader's passion for education or for higher education serves as my inspiration. My commitment to pursue higher education no doubt has helped me, has helped in strengthening my critical thinking and my passion, my passion for academic research and writing, like Benjamin Romero Salvosa. So I, I, I apologize for some of the typo errors I just noticed, and this was written by myself. And I've shared a link here where anyone can visit. It's a YouTube link. And these are all the references that I have used during the research. Thank you. And uh, keep safe. Thank you again, Sir Erita, for all the accommodation. Okay, thank you.